Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And today I'm going to be talking about oil lamps and uh, how I use them and what fuels I use and how I take care of them, which is pretty simple. And then Mr. Rain's going to be doing a separate video on gas lanterns. Those are different yet. So this is just the oil lanterns we use mostly in the house. Uh, we use these typically in the winter time and whenever the power's out, we like to use these. The rest of the time we tend to depend on our LED lights because they can run year round off solar power. Even when the power goes out, though we still like to switch over to using the uh, oil lanterns and candles to conserve our battery bank power since usually when we have power outages in the winter, typically we're not getting, which is when they usually happen, we're not getting as much solar collection. So we really try to avoid uh, using that during that time because we may need, we need it for other more important things than our lighting when we have all sorts of other lighting sources. Now I love candles and you know, they're really great, but I prefer of anything for a light source lanterns because they're both a natural light, the flame is contained and it's a uh, pretty easy and simple. You don't have the mess of the wax and all that kind of stuff. And so uh, really oil lamps are the way to go. So I have a few different kinds here and uh, I pulled out uh, some of the ones that we use the most frequently, but I also pulled, uh, brought in these two just to show you the difference in color. Now, I've talked about the green ones are the ones we use the most because these are in our living room. The black ones stay here in this room and we're not typically hanging out in here, especially during power outages. But uh, anyway, these ones stay in here. These have hardly been used because it's just, this isn't a room we hang out in. If we're doing anything where we need lights, usually it's doing stuff like this, we're shooting videos and lantern light isn't the best for that. But anyway, I just wanted to show you a couple of different colors, the Führerhand, the Führerhand. Uh, these are the German lantern. I just wanted to show you a couple of the other colors that they have. So the green, red, and black, they have more. They have blue, uh, you know, kind of a darker blue, like a royal blue, I think it is. They have a really beautiful bronze colored one. I think it's still available. Now you can buy these on Amazon and I'll go ahead and link to these below. But if you go to the company Vermont Lighting, I think it's called, you can find these for a little bit better deal if you buy the dented ones. And what that means is, on the body somewhere on here is a small dent and typically it's not noticeable like right there no not there like right here is a little dent i'm not even sure if you can see that little tiny dent there so the red and the black ones i that's where i got those and i got ten dollars off each but i i paid more i think the green ones i got from amazon and they don't have any dent in them but the thing is the dent and the body you can save 10 bucks and it's not even noticeable let's see if we can find the one on the black oh right there it's just you know but you can't see it when it's hanging up in both of these cases the way they're hanging is nobody can even see that dent anyway and even if the dent was in front it's barely would be noticeable so that's one way to go. I'll put the link to that to that store below and also to the Amazon link to, to the same one. So I recommend these lanterns. We really, really like these German ones. They are a little more expensive, but they're a good, uh, reliable lantern. And then of course I've talked about the mini ones. I really like the mini ones. This one sits on my dining room table. And then the I have more of, I have several of these uh, I keep in the bathrooms for just having a low light in there because you just don't need that much light in a small area. Uh, the little ones can have their purpose. Obviously, they're not great for lighting up a bigger room. Uh, typically, like in the living room, we use these lanterns here or in here. In fact, this one here, uh, it doesn't get used tons. This one stays in here and gets used when we have uh, I don't like to have all these lights on and so I'll use this in here on our, our table when we're having a lot of people over for dinner then we'll use this area as a, a alternate dining room because our our dining room <laughs> our real dining room is pretty small we can put six people in there but it's just a lot more roomy in here so anyway I'll use this one but anyway this was a garage sale find so I really like that lantern and then this is one one of the two just like it that sits on our mantle in the living room or right above the fireplace this these ones get used 
frequently. You know, the green ones and this one, and then this one here gets used quite a bit. This was also a garage sale find. It's an antique. I talked about it in a, one of my garage sale find videos. And I'll go ahead and link to that right up here if you're interested. I have lots of garage sale find videos. But anyway, I paid a whole dollar for this, and it is an antique or actually at least vintage. It's all railroad lighting. So they had the red, the green, and the yellow, and the lens was actually uh, tinted that color. So when the light shone through it, you could see if it was red, yellow, or green. You know, stop, slow, go. Uh, what we did was removed, I loved this little lantern, especially for only a dollar, which this one, if you were to go find it somewhere else, you're going to pay 30 to $50 for it. But then we just, re I didn't want red lighting, so we just uh, took the, I can't remember what Mr. Rain used, but he used something to get the, the red tint off the glass. And then this hangs in our kitchen. I'll put a picture right here. Uh, like I said, I use... Uh, I'll have several pictures right here where you can see how I use plant hooks. We bought a bunch of these pretty plant hooks. We have them in various places. I have two in here. One in the hall, which is where this red one goes, is in the foyer where our laundry area is. And then two in our living room where I have the two green ones hanging. And then one in the kitchen where I hang this. This is right next to the refrigerator. These are the most typical ones that we're going to use these ones here for, for lighting. Uh, you know, like I said, I have two of these. Now, one of the things I really want to point out about these is I didn't clean any of these before doing this video. Now, naturally, these two are, are pretty clean because they haven't been used very much. But this one, the, mo the dirtiest part about it is the top and around here because it simply needs to be dusted. Sitting in our living room, wood stove creates a lot of dust. And uh, especially if I'm ripping fabrics out in there, it gets very dusty in my living room. Ripping fabrics makes much dust but I want you to take a good look at the lens it is you can see it's a little bit darkened up here I have never I've never actually cleaned this glass at least I don't think it's ever been cleaned if it's ever been cleaned it was Patrick that did it but you can just see a little bit of darkening up here and these ones get used quite a bit same thing with these now um, I do clean these a lot more simply because they sit right above the fireplace and get very dusty now all I did was just kind of wipe the dust off but uh, we have used this and you can see no blackening in there from the oil being burned and right now this is probably it is time it's actually time for me to refill this and you can see it's halfway full and so same thing here this one gets used frequently because this is the one I use in the bathroom where we have our, you know, where we take our showers and stuff. So I get up early in the morning, take a shower. This, this lantern here is what I use to light the bathroom. If it's that time of the year where it's dark when I'm taking a shower. And you can see I haven't cleaned this and there's no darkening, no blackening on there, no soot buildup. Same thing with this one. In fact, this one, I wasn't paying attention and did run the oil completely out of it, and yet still the glass didn't darken on it at all. Now, the best way to clean these when you do clean them is to take this all apart, but unfortunately, I don't remember how to do it because Patrick is the one that's taken these apart, just like what he did with this one when he cleaned the, the uh, lens on it. But uh, there is a way you can take these apart. Now, to fill the lanterns like these ones, you've got a fill point right here. You just unscrew this. I seen somebody do a video one time where they actually lifted this up, I'll show you in a minute, and then filled it from the top, but that's not the way you do it. You fill it right here. This is a lot easier way to get to the tank. And using a filter, or using a funnel like this, this is strictly for using for filling lanterns. It's even got a little bit of a mesh in there to catch anything that might fall into it. And you stick that in there and fill it, but you have to keep checking, okay? Get, have a, do this under a bright light so you can see how full this is. You don't, obviously don't want it overflowing, but if you fill it through here, it's not going to, it's not going to get too full. Okay, if you fill it through the top, you can get it too full. So that's how you want to fill that. Now, as far as the wick goes, we've never had to replace these wicks. Not yet, anyway. We keep a lot of wicks on hand. We have yet to need to uh, replace them. Okay, one of the things you want to do with your lanterns of any kind, whether it be this kind or this kind, is to trim your wicks. Now I'll be the first to admit, I am terrible at remembering to trim the wicks. But what that will do, 
You see the wick right here. It's just, it, you know, this one's hardly been used, so it's not that important. But that will create a more even burning light. Okay, what happens, what tends to happen is the wick will burn sometimes in a rounded shape and it's best to trim it off so that it's more square. You're just going to get better efficiency out of your uh, light, out of your wicks when you keep them trimmed. So let's look at another one that's been used quite a bit, like this one. These ones have the widest wick. But see, that's still, I've never really had an issue with mine getting too bad. It's still pretty flat. It doesn't really need that much trimming. But you hear about trimming wicks and it being important. And uh, that's just, like I said, it's going to help give you more efficient light. Uh, the other thing that you need to know about your oil lamps is don't, like I did with this one over here, it's important that you don't let it run dry. Now, thankfully, um, even though this ran out, it didn't affect the wick any that I can see. If you forget about it and you run out of fuel, it'll then it'll burn the wick completely out and then you'll have wasted most of your wick. Because a good wick, if you keep your oil, you know, filled, usually I, I don't let them get it, let them get below halfway point. If you keep it full, your wick can last for a very, very long time. For us, you know, it can be several years. If you're using only oil lanterns and you're not using any other type of lighting, it might you might need to change it out more often than that, but uh, we have yet to need to change these out in these particular lanterns. We've had to change them out in lanterns before. But again, you just, these right here are ready to fill. And so I need to get that done. I need to get the other one and, and uh, we don't, I don't want to fill them in here on this nice counter. So I'm not going to do that in here, but typically we'll take them out into the shop and then fill them that way. Um, as far as I'm terrible, the other thing I'm not good at is keeping track of how many hours of light we can get out of each one of these, but the, obviously your bigger ones are going to give you quite a bit a whole day to a few days depending on how much you leave it lit. Uh, I know this one, this one lasts me for a very long time because you know I could use it every morning for a month before I run out of fuel but I'm not using it for that long a period of time. Now I had, a, a, it got broken unfortunately but I had this tiny little oil lamp I talked about in another video that I picked up because it was only 50 cents at a garage sale and I thought it was cute and I thought I'd give it a try. And that thing surprised the heck out of me. Now, like I figured, it gave out the kind of light that would be suitable as a night light. The thing burned surprisingly. I figured it might burn 15 minutes, a half an hour, because it was just, the little thing was only this big and then the top was that big. It was just tiny. It hardly held any oil. That thing burned for five hours straight. It's the only thing I ever timed was that. I've never timed these little ones, so I don't really have a clue. But, you know, it could, you know, I'm thinking if that little tiny one burnt for five hours straight, these ones should burn at least 10. But again, it's going to depend on how much you want to adjust your wick according to how much light you have. If you need more light, you turn the wick up, you, you turn your little knob so the wick comes up higher. That exposes more of the wick to the flame and thus gives out more light. But obviously you don't want it to go berserk. We try to keep them as low as possible to really conserve the fuel. So the higher you have that turned up, the more fuel and the more wick you're going to go through. So to be real conservative, we just keep it as low as we need it to be able to see by. Obviously if we're going to read by it or anything, we're going to probably turn it up. Now to talk just a little bit about fuels. Now, our favorite fuel to use is clean heat in our lantern. It has less smoke, less soot than kerosene, and it's, uh, in comparison to kerosene, it's odorless. But one thing I wanna point out again, this one only has kerosene in it. That's all I ever use in this one because we have tons of kerosene. We actually you know, stocked up on a bunch of kerosene before we learned about the clean heat. Now, price comparison, kerosene is going to be the cheapest fuel for lighting. But, you know, and so if you can handle the smell of kerosene, I don't mind the smell, but I do notice if I'm exposed to it for too long, it kind of makes me feel a little icky. Same thing with Patrick. A lot of people are gonna have this issue, so it's best to use kerosene in a very well ventilated area. Now, I honestly cannot say with any of the other oils how safe as far as inhaling, you know, being exposed to them all the time, how safe they are for your health. 
Uh, I haven't actually looked into it, but uh, I, I do think clean heat is a really good option. It's more expensive than kerosene, but it's a lot cheaper than the next one I'm gonna show you. So this one here is, this is what I was first stocking up on before I considered stocking up on kerosene because this is a very clean burning, very soot free, but it is also the most expensive. I don't, I think I paid uh, about $14 for this where this is a whole gallon and at our local store it's $13. This is three quarts. So definitely more expensive and I might be wrong on the price that I paid for it. They used to have a smaller bottle I'd get for 10 bucks. Uh, I think it was a half gallon where this is three quarters of a gallon. This is recommended if you're looking for something that's very clean. It doesn't have any odor at all and no soot. But again, the, the kerosene is supposed to put out more soot, but this isn't blackened. And the, and the clean heat, as I showed you here, only on this one can you see just a little bit of darkening up here from a lot of use. And then the other thing is with these, how you light them is you simply pull down on these type, is you pull down and you stick your lighter in there and you light it that way. And then you don't want to hang it from this, okay? You want to hang it from this when you if you're going to hang it up like we do and then these ones obviously you have to take the glass off the chimney and light them that way now when i bought these chimneys initially i was getting two for a really good deal on amazon it was the best deal i've seen i don't think they have that deal anymore i think they're still selling them for the same price but for one <laughs> So you might want to, if I can find that link, if it is still available, I'll put it below. It was, it was several years ago, but otherwise you might be able to find them for a decent price in your local, local hardware store. Chimneys are very easy to find, at least for this size. Uh, the chimneys for the tiny ones like this are almost impossible to find. I have yet to find any new ones. Every single one I've found has been, uh, attached to a lantern that I bought used and these I can't find new either. Uh, and they might be out there somewhere, but they they are hard to find. Oh, yeah, and then back to this style here. I showed you on Okay, so I showed you on these kind how you raise and lower the wick is through this little Thing here this little wheel and then on this one on these types It's going to be a, a, a thing like this that you raise and lower the wick Okay, just like that and that's how it works now, I'm not sure if I answered everybody's questions on your care for your lantern. Uh, I don't really do that much other than dust them off every now and then because they'll, you know, even when they're being used, the ones in our living room get really dusty, you know, and then these ones, the chimneys get super dusty on top of our uh, mantle. But that's about it, you know, that and keeping them filled. Uh, as far as the wicks go, I, I virtually never trim them. Uh, every once in a great while, if I see them getting a little out of hand, then okay, yeah, I'll trim them. But typically, it's just not an issue. So you just have to keep watch on them and check them every so often. The round ones that go in here, these take a round wick. I don't trim those at all. I just uh, I just light them and burn them, and no big deal. They're they're they don't you know some people might be really meticulous and particular about their lamps, and you might want to look into that for yourself. For me, I just. You know, as long as they're dusted and they have plenty of oil in them, I'm happy. So that's all I do. I'm going to show you how to break these down where you can get the globe out of them and work on the burner and replace the flat wicks in here. So here, here's one that's taken apart already. And as you can see, this bale, you have, uh, you have to hold up on this. Keep that elevated through your fingers. See how it just uh, springs back into place. So you get you you pull this up and you pinch that, and this the burner actually flips back down. So when you go to take this apart, so you can kind of see how everything works when you go to take these globes out of here. So I got this little guy right here. He's just a tiny bit different, but they're all basically the same. So let's say I want to replace the wick out of here uh, or you want to do some internal working on the burner or replace the burner. You just pull this up, pinch it with your fingers and roll this forward. It only hinges one way. So that's how the globe comes out. And so you can 
you can you know carefully clean these I just like to use soap and water just dish soap and clean those up but now I can let this back down and you can remove this portion of the burner it will flip that back the burner actually twists off do it the right way and this collar piece comes off and then you have the burner that's exposed you remove that and then replace this burner or replace the wick when it gets too short this little guy here a particular is a 3 8 inch 3 8 inch wide flat wick so you got flat wicks and round wicks so if you ever have to get in here and do some maintenance on this or replace it that's this is how you do it this part here has a couple little ears on it and these ears go into these little slots here right by the cap now when you go to take this apart you can see that's hinged that part is hinged right there it's hinged right here on the sides okay you can just see where that's catching right there and I continue to to turn this and then the little tab disappears underneath this little holding area right here on the base on the on the reservoir for the lamp itself so it hinges back this way so I'm gonna turn this around so you can see the globe going back into the unit so you flip that back towards me as you can see the globe here you got the wide end you know the wide part of the globe is at the base and the narrow part is at the top it's shaped it's not shaped the same on the top and the bottom so you just put that in like that just barely clearing this por portion here which I'm holding up with my hand you put that flat and you lightly place this spring-loaded portion on to the globe itself okay here's this this type right here again you just pull up this particular model hinges like so and it holds a little bit better with this little wire bail deal so it's 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 a little bit harder to take out I mean you know it's a little snugger it's not really hard and again this is shaped just a little bit differently than the one previous one so you want to make sure that you kind of pay attention on how they go in and how they come out but this this shape right here on the bottom is different than the shape on the top the shape on the top is a little bit more pronounced and this one has a little bit more of a radius on the bottom also the words are pointed in such a way where you can read them you can see that hinge right here and the other one the winged wheel model i was showing you it it hinged up on the sides and this one is similar to the one i just showed you and it's got these little ears or keepers right here on the reservoir or the base of the lamp i need to turn it clockwise in order to remove this one and that's how you take that apart to replace the burner this part here between my fingers is the burner and this wick here this takes a half inch wick for for this particular lamp here a little bit bigger than that little miniature guy i was just showing you so i just twist that back on there and when i get done maintaining and trimming the wick now i can leave this down here it doesn't hurt a thing I'll slip that right back into where it goes and the nice thing about this in here it just it doesn't fall out when you go to bail that forward so that saves your globe and that's how you do that well I hope you enjoyed this video and that maybe you learned something new thanks for watching take care and God bless